I think I will start with the, that one. I think is for me. So, uh, Marta Agnieszka asks whether well, if the balance between reactive and proactive model, the core aspect is the assessment, whether the use of technological tools. I refer here to the proportionality as one of the requirements to be fulfilled in order to legally restrict certain fundamental rights. Of course, I think uh, proportionality is one is 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 in, for example, in the Spain, the, the High Court, the Constitutional Court of Spain, in order to assess the intervention of of tax administration in the or the interference of tax administration in the in the fundamental rights of taxpayers as citizens, proportionality is one of the of the of the main. Uh, Elements, I think, is is not only proportionality, also necessity, also the three um, the three perspective of, of this. We cannot only uh, the, the end has to be uh, legitimate. The means have to be proportional, and this have to be a necessity of 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 actuate in that way. So I think is is is. It's clear that uh, uh, proportionality has to appear in all the all, all the all the assessments of the use of technological tools, but also in analogical world. I think any intervention of tax administration which interferes with with uh, taxpayer rights and fundamental rights to obtain or to secure collective rights should be assessed under a proportionality uh, assessment. I think Joa is an expert also in proportionality. So. <laughs> Pasquale, I don't know if, if you have access to the yeah, chat. I, I, I do have access to the chat, but Joao has raised his hand before. And since okay. somehow he's familiar with the topic of proportionality, yes. then I, I think you have not raised your hand. No. Oh, sorry. I thought it was you. No, I clapped. I was I was just appreciative of uh, Albert's presentation, yeah. but it was not raising the hand. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> OK, then I I, 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 I was misled. I, I saw that Marta has raised her hand, but before giving it, handing it over to Marta, it could perhaps be useful also if I follow up because I've got also a reply or at least a comment on her other on, on her other uh, question. Exactly. So um, uh, if, if that's OK for you, Marta. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, I meant Marta, uh, but um, uh, yeah. I, I saw that question, you know, Marta has raised two questions. And let me start by the second one, by addressing the second one, because it's a, it's a follow up to what already Alvaro has indicated. Now, one of the point is uh, that um, the, the need for proportionality cannot go up to the point of giving up privacy and data protection. Uh, it's very difficult to understand how we uh, we have the different the protection of the different how we reach the balance among the different rights. But uh, you know, I find it really hard to say that we can get something more proportionate in so far as we we force uh, to to make public disclosure of information, and uh, you know, we we don't secure an effective protection of rights. Marta, you know, this is my personal view, and I am you know, very perhaps allergic to naming and shaming. But the point that I want to make, as long as I give tax authorities the possibility to have access to that information, who has to do tax audit? Tax authorities. Then why should I, uh, you know, uh, force to give up privacy rights uh, or, you know, the data protection and make public disclosure? That's how I see that. It would be by its own nature disproportionate. Then you had another question on the SEE, or oh, sorry, I should say in English, SII, Suministro Inmediato de Información, in Spain and VAT. Well, you know, that is something which, uh, you know, I do not know it that well, but uh, in the framework of this research, I think that it falls within the cluster that I have mentioned, Marta. So this cluster in which you make uh, invoices available uh, electronically. Now, what I understand, uh, but again, I'm not a Spaniard, but this is my perception that in so far as it falls within that cluster, there is no unauthorized access to that information. So you have to identify yourself. 
So you can access your information and tax authorities can access to that information, but no one else and the ones that are entitled to access to that suministro inmediato de información can actually get that. So uh, I would say that as long as there is no unauthorized access, it is enhancing the quality of, uh, uh, of mo what I call monitoring. So I am quite positive about that. And finally, uh, I got a question from Michel Pjepior Vieira. And uh, hi, Michel, nice to, to, to see that you are online. We have seen each other, we have met some time ago in Brazil. Uh, and uh, well, the consequences of illegal disclosure of data, uh, is it a matter of making them, uh, in, making them impossible to use or uh, do they give entitlement to compensation? Now, for my own way of reasoning, they, uh, you know, the point concerning compensation is only something that comes at a later stage. So, in other words, I think that an ex post protection is not as good as an ex ante protection. So, uh, if I talk an, a, about an ex post protection based on compensation, I eventually allow tax authorities to use something that has, in fact, infringed the rights. So I am quite skeptical about going this way, but in some parts of the world, including in particular in the United States, they might take a different view in this respect. So uh, Alvaro, uh, I think uh, it's back to you. And actually we should, uh, we should ask the technical team to allow Marta to, yes. uh, to, to, to make her comments and perhaps she has a reaction to what we said. Yes, please. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for your uh, answer. I can also maybe turn on the camera. Let me see. Uh, hello. Thank you for very hello, interesting Marta. presentations and for Marta. for your for your comments. I can confirm that you are indeed Marta. <laughs> yes, it's me. <laughs> um, uh, both of my questions were 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 motivated by uh, by my. Um, curiosity and searching what exactly we need to know or what exactly which aspects we have to assess to know whether the limitation of the right is proportionate i think this is the, the core difficulty we know we we can limit the right it has to be a pr proportionate limitation so what do we need to know and and the question about the suministro immediato de información uh, i was also thinking that there is actually not a lot of transparency in information uh, how the taxpayer's data is being uh, stored for how long how is it being processed what it's being done with that data and that for me was one of the indicators um, or an argument to say that perhaps um, uh, that goes a little bit too far and and without certain information and procedural guarantees to actually verify and to understand by taxpayers how that information is used whether only and strictly for the purposes of fighting VAT fraud or also for other purposes might put at risk the, the proportionality and my second question then was uh, whether actually the balance between the reactive uh, and proactive model is something we should pay the main attention to when assessing proportionality and is is that in in uh, in uh, in your opinion uh, the uh, core element for assessment of proportionality uh, or 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 not or only one of many elements to look at um <laughs> Asquale, you have to yes. raise your hand. Um, uh, yeah, uh, thanks very much, Marta. And uh, uh, I must say, I have not gone up to the point on the suministro immediato información to get to understand uh, precisely what is being done. What I saw is that it's secluded from the rest, but let's try to explore potential paths, also taking into account the concern that you have been uh, precisely expressing a couple of minutes back. Um, on the one hand, we have not reached a level in which, for from a tax perspective, uh, there are sufficient standards, sufficiently clear standards of how uh, long uh, tax information can be stored for. So uh, I am not aware of any limit to the storing of tax information, but of course, this is something that can change at any time. I think it could be useful also to say that if there are some GDPR standards, that it could be worth addressing whether these GDPR standards could be relevant 
for, let's say, nudging a development in one direction. Frankly speaking, Marta, we have the so-called uh, statute of limitation rules, which prevent tax authorities from collecting uh, um, taxes beyond a certain period. So uh, some people can take for granted that after that period, they are to some extent, you know, either disposed when it was about, uh, you know, physical data. I am quite sure that they would not, that the, the, the ta my tax return of 1985 has perhaps, you know, been destroyed by the Italian tax authorities. But, uh, you know, the, the point is that uh, from a digital perspective, we in fact do not know whether that is always the case because they can also store them forever. And then the point can also be, well, they can be under threat or under attack and there could be a similar situation. Uh, the point is that after a certain number of years, they can clearly not use it for the statute of limitation rules. So perhaps it could also be meaningful to say that also considering this, that there is no reason why tax authorities should keep that information because they can say, well, we want to keep them for statistical analysis to see how VAT fraud has uh, evolved across the years. Could that be the case? Could that be important? To be stored? Well, perhaps yes. Uh, and then you should find also a reason why you want to have it destroyed. So, in other words, uh, can we say that the fact that there are some limits to the time limits to the storage of information privately should also apply to public matters? And then one can say, well, GDPR is about uh, non public disclosure. We are talking here in a different context. So, uh, this is. Uh, still to be explored as a territory. What is uh, perhaps uh, good to discuss, and I'm sorry if I'm taking a bit of an extra time, but it's not that easy, the question that you have you have raised, you have asked, and also your reaction prompts me to, to be up to your expectations if I manage. Um, we have two judgments uh, on VAT, the WebMind licenses and the ISPAS. And of course, you know, that also brings us to say, well, information that is collected for one purpose, can it be used for other purposes? Now, we know that this is very problematic when it comes between social security and taxes. We know that it was problematic when it was collected for criminal purposes and then used for administrative purposes. But if we collect that information for VAT purposes and then we use it for direct tax purposes, would that be so much of a problem? I would say we are neither in an ISPA situation nor in a web mind licenses situation. Whether that is uh, uh, useful, that in my view, possibly yes, as precedence. Whether that is conclusive, I'm not sure. But still, I also want to make the point that we should not force uh, you know, one and the same tax authority, because we're talking about one and the same tax authority, that is collecting information for tax, uh, you know, for tax avoidance or whatever in one or the other case, we cannot artificially fragment that, Marta. I have been, you know, discussing in my own country about the fact that uh, we think that the, uh, the, the procedural rights do not apply in Italy in uh, administrative procedures except when EU law is applicable. And that is a fundamental mistake by the, the Italian Corte di Cassazione at present, because they see that administrative and judicial tax procedures are separate, and only when EU law is relevant, then they comply with uh, all the case law starting from Soprope onwards. But, you know, if we prevent tax authorities from using information for VAT that they have collected for direct tax purposes and vice versa, I don't think that we are going in the right direction. All this is a lot of uncertainty, Marta, but at least I gave you my point of view. Thank you very much. Thank you, Max. Uh, very quickly, to answer your, your question also, I think we, we shouldn't uh, mix the proportionality assessment uh, in, in these cases with the, the model of, of the, the, the design model of, of tax administration, because even in a, in a, in a proactive model, we should have take in mind the proportionality. We cannot overwrite uh, proportionality by justifying that the model is to to say to 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 collaborate with taxpayers. So the the this principle always has to to bear in mind.